salute my man Style Bender. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, boy. The podcast of champions. Yeah, damn it. Undisputed. Middleweight champ, undisputed middleweight champ, got Bobby Knuckles out of there in the second round. And I'm going to tell you guys something. I was texting with him prior, mm-hmm. and he told me it was round two. Called That's it. so crazy. Called it. Told me it was round two. Yeah. He goes, I think I will get him out of here in round two. He goes, I'm ready for seven, but I think we get him out of here in round two. Well, he, he it's was a so- five round fight, but ready for seven oh, means gotcha. uh, as as it, basically, yeah. I have. Oh, yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, so like when you train for a like a twelve round boxing match, you're like, I'm training for fifteen rounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter because how, whatever. The point is this: it was an unbelievable fucking fight. Did you watch the fight? Watch the replay. You watch the replay. Yeah. So yeah, you watched the yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Watch the fight. Uh, and you watched it. Yes. Okay, it was. An unreal fight, but more than just an unreal fight, and we'll get into the minutia of the fight and talk about that, um, what was so incredible about it was the spectacle. Mm. And talk uh, about it. Yeah, mm. we need to talk about this because like, what I think, I think a lot of fighters don't get, and Whitaker is one of them, is that like, it's really not about how good you fight. It's not only about how good you fight. There's, If you want to be a star... If you want to make money in the game, yeah, right it's, it's right? prize fighting. It is it's pri- prize fighting, dude. You, <laughs> you got to give me moments exactly. to be like, "That's the fucking guy," and that was a moment. No, but- people watching that fight, the majority of people watching that fight have no fucking clue how fighting works. Yeah, yeah I yeah. don't. But I, 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 you don't. You don't. I don't even know. MMA shit. Mm-hmm. I know boxing, mm-hmm. but I don't know about the kicks and the fucking jujitsu and the ground stuff and the wrestling. Like yeah. I don't. But I love storylines. Yeah. I love getting attached to someone. I love knowing that there's some beef or something going on. And Izzy carried the entire promotion. The other guy in the promotion didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. He was like, he was like, yeah, he's yeah, he's pretty uh, <laughs> pretty funny guy. Has some good comebacks. Yeah. You know, like he really wasn't doing anything to build the fight. Yeah. And the UFC has to be so fucking exhilarated mm-hmm. that. Stylebender won because you don't even have to promote him. He's going to promote himself. Promote himself. He, and there was a lot of things. And, and mind you, this is in all sports. Especially in combat sports, there's always like these star-making moments for motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Like Mike Tyson had his star-making moment. Floyd, fucking Hector. Who are, oh, it usually happens in boxing because knockouts are That's what more we common and all this other shit. But UFC, it's rare that it happens. Like Conor McGregor had one. Conor McGregor had one. John Bones Jones had no. one. Spider had one. I don't think Jones had it. Jones in that one? We'll get into that, but I don't All think right. I don't think he's whatever you think about stunt. Jones. Yeah, yeah. Spider Silva had plenty. Yes. Fucking McGregor had plenty. Ronda Rousey. All these people. It's hard to get those type of star making moments in the UFC. It's hard to get people to give a fuck about a, a sport so violent. Yeah. And make it look so fucking like beautiful. Like from yep. the entrance to the way he knocked the motherfucker out to the way he fucking danced after the fight. Right. The shit he was talking like. <laughs> Bruh, yeah. he was a household name. The, the the day, the it's, very next Sunday on Football Sunday. Yeah, he is the top story in the news on in, in all of sports news because it's and not it's, about the fight; it's about the night. Mm-hmm. You are paying for entertainment; you must entertain. Yeah, and while a fight is entertained because it's the highest stakes, right? Yeah. It's like if you lose, you get knocked out. Right. You could have irreparable damage. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could die. Like yeah. that's why yeah. we watch this because you put your life on the line. There's a chance that you fucking die. It's high stakes, you know. But the whole package of entertainment. You, if you look at, I look back at, you know, there's there's guys like Floyd Mayweather making hundreds of millions of dollars. There's there's boxers in, named uh, uh, Barrera Morales. These mm-hmm. are names that the average fight fan will definitely know. Uh, who ended casuals. up making and even even some casuals back in the day okay. they were making millions of dollars and they all made that money because of one boxer by the name of Prince Nassim Hamed. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Prince Nassim Hamed was the first I think he was a 130 pounder who added spectacle to was, his Was he the one who would do the flip into the ring? Flip into the ring. Yeah, he yeah. would do the Michael Jackson thriller mm-hmm. theme music as mm-hmm. he walked to the ring and he's dancing on the way and what he showed the boxing world is, oh, your weight doesn't define your worth. Meaning back in the day it was if you're a heavyweight, only. 
Yes, that's who made the big yeah. money. No, your draw mm-hmm. defines your worth. Mm-hmm. And he started having these massive draws at 130 pounds. All of a sudden, we were watching little guys fight. Yeah. Now, the, the perception back in the day was, why would I watch some guy fight that I could beat up? Yeah. Now, granted, these 130-pounders would, would still kill destroy anybody, people. <laughs> but, but for the average six-foot dude, like that's, for a guy like you, yeah. you'd be like, I'll kick Marco Antonio Barrera, yeah. whatever's fucking. I'll kick his ass. He's little. Casuals, casuals. Because yes. you you see big, you assume it, it, it always equates with strength. So yes. I'm almost gonna watch the heavyweight fights because those are the real ass kickers. And they have the, the knockdowns. Right? Yeah. At that yeah. amount of weight, you're gonna knock people out. Mm-hmm. Izzy understands the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, the guy planned an intro. With choreography and with dancing, boys. with and also when well, you add another level, because it's the fact that it's boys. Yeah. Let's say they weren't even as boys. Let's just just say it's part of the night, yeah. right? Plans the dancing in mm. the beginning. Amazing, beautiful. Smoked it. He's actually good at dancing. <laughs> he gets you hyped. Yeah. Okay. Goes into the ring. It doesn't stop there. Before the fight, when the camera pans to him. He, de- he signs the death note, mm-hmm. right? For now, the anime nerds. The exactly. anime nerds are plugged in, right? <laughs> yes. Part of the dance, I think, was something to mm-hmm. the anime nerds. All the, but the, the Naruto, they did the Naruto run at of the course. end of it. They did the fucking uh, Avatar type now, of thing. Now, when you write the death note, right? Yeah. The death note is a meme. Yes. The death note is a gif. The death <laughs> note is shareable. The death note goes social. The dance goes social. Mm-hmm. You can't guarantee- The celebration at the end is a gif already. Yeah. Now, and then we do the fight, you knock them out, that's gonna be great. But we're not done. After the knockout, the celebration with the gun, when yeah. he shoots everything, that's a gift. That's a meme. You're sending that to your friends about your own personal shit. It was and like, we're not done. We're not done. Yeah. The whole world is watching because you knocked this guy out. All the eyes are on you. You use that to promote your next fight. Yeah. He goes right up onto the cage and he throws the middle fingers at Paulo <laughs> Costa, calls him a juice monkey or whatever he I is. I want to get him before the before USDA. That's, that's the guy him. he talked about when he first came on here, right? Yes. Mm. So exactly, yes, he was he was sitting in that exact chair. Yo, to that sorry, no, was right here. I yeah. just realized he said, you know how he said like I I see the next move. Yes. I don't always, just, I'm always looking two, three moves down the road. Yes. He's been seeing that move. For a minute, That bro. double middle finger. Yep. He's been thinking about that since the first time he came here, what, a year ago? Yeah, yes. Just about. Now, 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 I'll tell you from personal experience, this has happened to me even with my own shows. Sometimes you're so concerned with executing and, and wanting the outcome that you don't want to change anything or jinx it or risk it. You know, there'll be times where we're doing a show and we're setting up some cameras and I also put a camera like on the stage somewhere and I'll be like, ah, maybe they can see the camera and that will make yeah. them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And mm. if they feel uncomfortable, maybe they won't laugh and I'll get in my head mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. I have to force myself to say, fuck it. Yeah. Right. Because what happens when that camera's there for the magical moment? Right. And then you get that clip that ends up going viral. Mm-hmm. There are very few people that can see beyond the win and plan past the win but if you can plan past the win Mm -hmm. everything past the win is escalated so if you have your dance if you have how you even how he saluted his parents afterwards all of very, those things. Very good Euro Bob boy. Went for there, sure. Went down, the had feet. a thing. I'm like, my mom saw that shit. She was like, uh-uh, he is a good boy. Like, yeah. <laughs> he could have made there that whole go. shit up. But all the white people watching were like, oh, that's how Africans say hello to their parents. Right? <laughs> so, so everything, the, the fact that he had all these extra moments on top of it, mm-hmm. right, is where you sell you yourself and where we start to follow you and see what's going on. What do you do when the world's watching? Yeah. What do you do when people are paying attention and how can you capitalize on those moments? And I'll be honest, before you get the victory, it's hard to plan those because you feel like you you're fear not getting win. the victory. What you fear not getting the victory. And there's an arrogance and, that you fear like, yo, if I act like I got the victory, God or whoever, whatever, might not give me the victory to humble me. And then you just fuck yourself because you lose that moment after. Yeah, You know what it's like? It's like getting on a plane. Buckle your seatbelt and go, planes don't crash. Yeah. <laughs> this will be the one that fucking crashes. Who the fuck says My that? Yeah. I land planes. Yeah. I land them bitches, right? Yeah. But like, but who would say that? You don't say it because you're like, let me just fucking land. Yo, if the pilot said that, I wouldn't feel confident. I'd be like, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, dog. Right? Yeah. So that's what you think about before a massive moment like that. You're like, let me just not, let me just get through yeah. this. Let me make sure I do it. But yeah. there's a difference with people that are superstars 
they plan after in the Conor McGregor's. That's you know that what was mean? my next point. My point is I haven't the seen Izzy's, something like the this Floyd's. since Conor McGregor, especially for UOC, not only because he's youngish, he's just turned 30. One thing that people aren't talking about, he's representing a market that the UFC hasn't really tapped yet. This is like they got the Nigerian champions, but they still haven't had that UFC Africa event that they know is going to do 80,000 in whatever fucking Welcome. stadium it is. The same thing with Conor McGregor, as yep. big as he was. Mm -hmm. And not only was he a great fighter and a big fighter, he was big for fucking Ireland. Yes. And now every time he came out, all of Ireland's coming out to see yep. this motherfucker. Yeah. Now what is he? Every all time four he million out, Irish people. The, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. But they came, but they coming deep. And now like Nigerians and now all you know everywhere. Nigeria, you got a hundred million. They 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 are yeah. they're gonna come now out deep. They have deep the buying power of three million Irish people. <laughs> you still have a hundred million. <laughs> but I mean, like it's a, it's a great time like for the UFC, especially with Nigerians, man. Dude, he's, he's a three. star. The Rock DM'd him. He peep. I think yes. screenshotted. Shaq also, Shaq, I didn't know. I, yeah. Conor McGregor was. Uh, Putting him on his IG story, talking about what a great fight it was. Like, yeah. he it, ready, it, man. Household is, name overnight. It is, it is household name. He is the face of the UFC. And outside of the African market, which is 100%, mm. absolutely, um, I think what he brings to UFC right now is the most potent marketing device that exists in the world today, which is hip hop. Mm. The UFC is devoid of hip hop uh, that's, with that's its major stars. Mm. Yeah. To be honest with you, Conor McGregor. He was the closest one. Is the closest, he was the closest thing one. they Just because he was real flossy. To, oh, oh, oh. And outside of flossy, what was his name? What is his Instagram name? Oh, the Notorious MMA. My yeah. bad. You're right. You got yeah. that. He, he would come out to Biggie and stuff like that. The viral clip of him Comes fucking out to Biggie. Yeah. He got, riding the bike, play, singing on. Um, all that shit. Flex on people with the Gucci belts, gotta, the gotta, Gucci gotta, shoes, it's all that. the motherfucking D O double G Super. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And he, the dude would rap. He would spit. He would have the swag. Yeah. He brought hip hop. When I say hip hop, I don't mean... Literally, the black people in the Bronx to start hip hop. Yeah, I mean the essence yeah. of what hip hop represents. Youth, and if outside <laughs> youth, confidence, swag, yeah. confidence, bravado, yes. right? But also execution. Yes. Yo, I'm the man, but watch me spit and prove mm -hmm. that I'm the man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, and I think that what happened is they. I think people thought John Jones was gonna be hip hop just because he was a black he was guy. Black, yeah. He's not. He's not. He's from Bones Jones don't even sound hip hop. Bones Jones <laughs> is, is a Bones fucking Jones. country DJ yeah. in Albuquerque where Johns is from. Like John Jones from like John Jones to be honest is like a midwestern fucking regular dude. Yeah. There's no swag to him. You're not really sure who he is. Yeah. Iggy Iggy Izzy represents Izzy represents Hip hop, and it's where he's from, as far away as you possibly can get from hip hop. And he's New in the Zealand, MMA and whatever else that you don't associate with hip hop. Oh, you thought you did it, but you know what? Yeah. You know what young the hood kids, was into when I was yeah. growing up? Dragon, Dragon Ball, Z. Ball Z. Kung Fu, <laughs> exactly. Dragon Ball. It was Wu -Tang it was Clan. it was Kung Fu for the older heads, right? <laughs> yeah. Wu Tang Clan. It was Kung Fu for the older heads, and then the younger heads start to get into Dragon Ball Z mm. and these like that cartoons. Was just a yeah. suburb. No, anime is very. Dude, the hood is very. Like Meg Thee Stallion, another one, huge, huge anime fan. Does a whole bunch of cosplay and shit. Like hip hop and anime have always had like this weird non relation relationship with each other for a long time. But I guess my point was more he seems very comfortable in his own skin. Yes. None of it seems yes. put on. Yeah, it's just I mean yeah, it's just dope. It seems authentic, and I think it's gonna sell. It's not gonna sell like Conor McGregor's soul, but I think he. I don't know much about fighting, but he seems like a better fighter. I think Conor McGregor. Look, there's a racial component to everything. You can't deny the racial component yes, in things. Yeah. The UFC is a predominantly like white fan base, just mm -hmm. like most fan bases are predominantly white. We're in America. It's a predominantly white country, mm -hmm. et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. I think that Connor definitely satisfied that outside of like Ireland. He also satisfied like, you know, white dudes are like looking for a guy with some fucking bravado oh, to go yeah. handle it, right? Mm. And But I think what Izzy does is he spreads the sport. And I think that he is an example for all these young kids, like a Gervonta Davis, who's a boxer out of, I think, Baltimore. Yeah. If Gervonta was 10 years younger and saw Izzy fight, he might. He's an MMA fighter. Yeah. Mm. So this is where you start to see, in my opinion, Africans absolutely getting into MMA, mm -hmm. but more so than just African, you get to see the American hip hop influenced audience say, I'm going to take a jujitsu class, I'm going to mm. take a kickboxing class. I'm gonna do that. Whereas the hood was always football, boxing, yeah. basketball, 
Yeah. That's yeah. rap. And and the great thing about him and the way he broke it down, almost like how Deshaun Watson broke down like fucking oh, defenses yeah. in football, he made it very fucking digestible for everybody in the post post fight conference. He was talking about how like, you know, just because these guys are big and juiced up or whatever, like they don't mean they're the best fighters. Like they look at me like I'm some skinny dude or whatever, like Bring it. I, I don't care if you hit the hardest, I hit the most accurate. I'm he a striker. That, and he again. broke that shit down and that that's exactly how he won. Bro, he Precision. said it a year and a half ago, another podcast you weren't at. Uh, he talked about it was how, just like, one. I, I was at both. I was the other <laughs> one, asshole. <laughs> this is where he talked about how, like, I don't. He said this exact thing. I don't need. I'm gonna change the way people fight. Mm. You, Do you don't think need Kaz gonna make it to your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> when he's asking for his invitation, the mail be like, bro. I think it might be late. I don't know. But it's gonna get there. Don't worry. It's gonna be there. I'll be, be there. Gonna, I'll be there. All I'm missing for the world. God damn. Even if you don't want. Go or go. a slam event. <laughs> 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 hey, I gotta oh, gosh. introduce two hot dog vendors a little later <laughs> at uh, Grand Central Station, so I can't make the podcast because it's a very important hot dog introduction thing. You know, one owns a halal sand, the other's a hot. It's, it's, it's a tough thing. Listen, you know what I mean? They can't the hot sell pork out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, go ahead. He talked about that exact thing, and it's so crazy. Everything he talked about a year ago, you are seeing now. He has known, predicted, seen, whatever it is. Yep. He talked about this exact thing. I will take everybody. I don't need to punch the hardest. I punch accurately, and after a while, it wears you down. You can only take so many. Mm. That's exactly what I was hearing them say on the commentary. Oh. Like, he's getting these shots, and it doesn't seem like much, yep. but it's going to start to wear on this guy. It's going to start to wear on Whitaker. And honestly, what really, I think, helped him in my eyes is the fight before then. We were talking about it with Tyson Fury, yes. where somebody needs, he needs some rounds in him. Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin Gastelum. He fought Kelvin yeah. Gastelum in a war. And it was brutal. Yeah. And he got fucked up, but it was like... Okay, he took that. He he can go to distance. You and know what I mean. That after he's, that, when he said, yeah, "Now he spoke I know." About that here, yeah. he know what happens in those in those events, and he spoken that spoke about that here is you don't know how long you could hold your breath until you're drowning. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. when you're underwater, you and I right now, we probably think we could hold our breath a minute. Mm-hmm. But when you're drowning, you gonna realize it could be two minutes. Yeah. But then you might die. Yeah. But yeah. but right before you die, but you're if like, you survive, you're like, all right, Shit, I can go two I can minutes hold my underwater. Two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And that's what you learned, and that that's what he learned in that fight mm. is like how far he could take it. So there's a renewed like sense of confidence, and how far his heart would go. Like, hundred percent. Not just I can last. I got the endurance. I will not fucking give up. I won't yeah. do it. I'll die it. in this He's, ring. I'll be a coon. That's what he says. So He's how we'll so die here. so he goes. So I'm watching this. I'm watching a little uh, some tape on on uh, Robert Whitaker, mm-hmm. and the only thing I was concerned about was if is if Izzy was going to get caught with an overhand right, right? Okay. An overhand right is a punch that's looping, right? So a straight right is obviously stuck straight out, and then overhand right is the one that kind of goes up in the sky and then comes down, mm-hmm. right? Remember that old uh, Martin Lawrence, or maybe it was Jamie Foxx? I forget the old uh, about the, the man hers. No, yeah, the, the, Mar- the club punch. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Martin Lawrence yeah. stand up. I think that bit. was Jamie. Uh, was it Jamie? When he does the act out of when he goes up. <laughs> So, <laughs> but it's a big, massive, it's a big, massive sweeping punch. And my only concern was because Izzy comes from a kickboxing background, they don't slip punches the way boxers do, right? So, like, the way a boxer slips punches, right, yeah. is you bend to one side and kind of forward and down, right? Or bend to the other side and kind of down as well. You can't do that against kickboxers because they can kick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If mm-hmm. I bend like this, I'm closer Dang, to that motherfucker's yeah. foot. Yeah. Leg to the face. Yeah. Yeah. So the way that they avoid punches is leaning back. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you notice in the fight, the way Izzy was avoiding that looping right hand was by leaning back away from it. Okay, right? yeah. Now, I mean, that's how, that's how he caught the knockout, too, if I'm not mistaken. 100%. But so, he, he backed up. They went for the overhand right. Yep. He backed up a little bit, and then they caught him, and that's when he stumbled, and then he got all over him, and it was a wrap. So so exactly exactly the sequence was mm-hmm. R- Whitaker throws a jab, which Izzy is trying to time. Yeah. It connects with Izzy, but it actually pushes Izzy back mm-hmm. away from the angle. overhand yeah. right. Mm-hmm. The overhand right goes past him, and then Izzy catches Whitaker with a right hand, Excuse me. And then they trade hooks. Now, trade mm-hmm. hooks mean they both throw hooks at the same time. Izzy connects with Whitaker. Whitaker's like six inches away from Izzy's chin. Mm-hmm. Like, Izzy's distance was just perfect the whole mm-hmm. fucking fight. Mm-hmm. Locks in, night, night, get fucking sat the fuck down, dude. Right. And it was over. And 
But that's what I was concerned about, man. I was concerned that there was going to be – the only thing was if he catched them with a wild looping right. Now, here's the thing when you throw a looping right hand or an overhand right. It takes longer to get there. Yeah. The closest distance between two two places is a straight, straight line. line. It's mm. not a curve. Mm. And Izzy was seeing this thing come yeah. from a fucking mile away. Did you, were you guys seeing it? Like, oh, for sure. The guy I would miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the guy would swing. His eyes was locked in. As soon as he swung at him, <laughs> his eyes was locked in. And then you could see there's like a slight pause right after that hook is thrown. And you yep. see the wide opening. Bop, bop. And it, it was, it was, that was all Too she quick. wrote. Right and I, like, I liked yeah. Izzy throwing more hooks. This is the most like hooks that I've seen him throw. Like He would like double up with his hooks. Right. Mm. But he knew he had the distance advantage. And right. that's what was catching him. And honestly, yeah. if, if there was 15 more seconds left in that first round, it might have been uh, over in the first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was five more seconds. Yeah. Might have been over in the first. Yeah. I mean, he was he was on his ass, yeah. gone, yeah. and mm-hmm. luckily saved by the bell. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he catches him in that second, and dude, it was, it's so interesting watching like how the styles end up working because in boxing, the reason you don't lean back like that yeah. is because once you lean back, you can't go any further. Right. Right. Like yeah. the reason why Ali. Got his jaw broken by Frazier is because Frazier waited for Ali to lean back and then lunged in with the hook. Uh. So you faint and then wait for the lean. Now, once you've leaned, you right. can't go anywhere. It's hard for you to yeah. go back. I got yeah. you locked. Yeah. Right. right? So, but Izzy, he was so fucking agile. It was great, man. And he just. I was wondering why he was leaning back. I didn't think about the kickboxing thing because I was like, yo, that just seems like more effort. Yes. <laughs> it just, it's yeah. just slower. It's everything. Yeah. Boxing, quick slip. Yep. This is a yeah. full lean back. And I was like, "What? why is he doing that? 100%. It's, it's avoid those kicks. I was asking the kickboxing coach because when I, I would have trouble throwing kicks, actually, mm-hmm. because I'd be kind of leaning forward as boxers do, and then you kind of like stunt your own kicks. And right. then they would tell me, don't lean over to miss these punches. You're just leaning mm. closer to a fucking knee to the right. face right. or like a, a kick to your head. So, Can we can we talk about, for a quick second, Yeah, can we talk about John Jones for a second? Did you see what he was tweeting before the fight? What was he tweeting? So I think in a roundabout way, somebody asked Izzy about, you know, a potential John Jones yep, super yeah, fight yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Jones goes on this big old tweet spree. Don't ask me to quote it word for word, but he ends it with, you keep trying to hype yourself up to fight me and I'll keep convincing myself to make you my bitch when it finally happens. Right. Right. The fact that he was even concerned with a dude in two, what, two lesser weight classes? What was he, middleweight? Uh, John Jones light heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. So one so weight class. So that's one weight class. Yeah, yeah. Boom, there. By the time this kid gets his confidence together, I'll probably already be in the heavyweight division. I need to wait till 2021 to start believing in myself. Okay. Um, I sense concern. Oh, he's... I sense concern out of completely bones. Completely like, But But look at that. He doesn't give... He doesn't even give... He doesn't give... He doesn't give DC this much... Ent- uh, this much... This much uh, He gives attention. nobody in the division that much attention. At all. Barely tweets at all. And look how corny this is. Like, is there anything cool <laughs> about that statement? Yeah. Is there anything funny about I'm that? Not, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not a John Bones fan. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of his work. But he's, I just I mean as a face of the company. Yeah. No, no, he's not. He's, I just don't even get the tweet. It's How is that shit talk to say, oh, you know what? When you're ready to fight me, I still won't fight you. I mean, listen, DC well, said it in the yeah. post fight. And he was just like, yo. I'm, and I, I'm, and It might be sour grapes because he doesn't yeah. fuck with John Bones or whatever. But at the same time, he's like... All right, like yeah, Bones, you're you're bigger than him, but that's about it. Like he's so just as here's he's just as talented, he's just as this, but here's where it gets interesting. Yeah. Here's where it gets interesting. Um if Jones can find a way to get the fight to the ground, I think Jones oh, has right. like a pedigree in wrestling. Yeah. He's very good. Again, I don't know wrestling, so and I we don't know how great Izzy is at wrestling because mm. no one's been even able to get him down. Mm. He's he just crazy. Be fucking dude. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, well, real quick go, question go. about was Whitaker, because I heard on the commentary that I watched, he felt confident that he could outbox Izzy. So it seemed like I couldn't tell if he chose I want to box or if he was trying to wrestle and Izzy just wouldn't let him get close. Chose to box. He thought he could drop him. He thought he could knock him out. If he decides to wrestle, do you think that fight goes differently? No, nah, because he has to get in to wrestle. And if you want to shoot on Izzy, you want to deal with some knees, you want to deal with some feet. Right. Yeah. You better be ready. Okay. So now that, I'm not saying that you can't. So the difference within Jones is is Jones is six five, right? Yeah. So now you know. Did you see all that distance between uh, Bobby Knuckles? Uh, yeah. Bo- I keep calling Bobby Knuckles, but uh, Whitaker, mm-hmm. yeah. Robert Whitaker's punches in Izzy's face. Like there's Izzy just had controlled the distance beautifully. Yeah. Jones can limit that distance, right? Just uh, out of the just fact that long. his arms are long too, yeah. right? Um, that being said, the bigger the fighter, 
generally the slower they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if he's evading punches from a smaller fighter that can throw much faster, yeah. he's going to be able to evade from okay. a bigger fighter. There's just more power with the yeah. bigger fighter. Listen, there's no doubt that fighting John Jones is going to be harder than fighting Robert Whitaker. Oh, for sure. But the way right. that he smoked Robert Whitaker, and people sleep on Robert Whitaker, this guy was a fucking... Oh, it's his first out, right? Mon- yeah, he's a monster. Son, before everybody knew what Izzy could do, Yeah, like I was talking to Brendan Shaw, now Shaw is like, yo, this kid's the truth. Yeah. Dude, I was texting Rogan about it. Rogan goes, he's already one of the best ever. Yeah. Wow. I got to yeah. text Izzy that for now. Nah, he went, he went, he, he said, I think Rogan he said it goes, on uh... He's already one of the best ever. Mm. Not middleweights, just best ever. Skills. <laughs> and, and wow. So, so the question with Jones is this, though. This is where it gets interesting. This is what I would do if I'm Izzy, right? I take two more fights in middleweight, right? Smoke this Paulo Costa bum, Mm -hmm. right? Matter of fact, if it's me, I wouldn't even fight Paulo Costa. I'm only fighting people that speak English. (laughs) (laughs) You're not making me no money. We can't sell this fight. We can't sell the fight. (laughs) Right? Talk to me now. Talk to me now as execs. The three of us are UFC execs. We're sitting down there, or we're Izzy's management. We just made a brand new star. We just got our black Conor McGregor. We got black Conor McGregor. What the fuck are we going to (laughs) do? We got black Conor McGregor that's actually way more likable. Conor's not really that likable. He's just undeniable. He was. Undeniable. He was undeniable. Now you have a guy who's undeniable Conor and likable. Because he he was he was Conor McGregor's T.O. He was cocky as fuck, but he was so good. You yeah. just you kind of had to respect it, yeah. and you liked it or you hated it. Most yeah. hated it. No, yeah. but that sells fights because that's Mayweather. Exactly, that no, sells fights. Hundred yeah. percent. But they 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 but stop selling the likeable. fights when you lose. Yeah, and true. and don't get me wrong. People will pay to see Conor again, mm-hmm. right? But if he keeps losing, money's gonna go down. Yeah, yeah. And but now you have. Imagine Mayweather was likable. Uh, you know, listen. I'm not going to put the, him in this shoes, but there's a difference when you're when you're Ali, right? Like, yeah, Ali did the impossible, and people liked him. Yeah. Eh. At the time, did they like? Him? I was about to say, I don't know if at the time. No, no, no. Liked, his no. people oh, yeah, loved yeah, yeah, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. He had bro, for keeping the NFL thing going. He Patrick Mahomes, yo. <laughs> he mad talented. Everybody loved this motherfucker. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Mad people, fucking say, people who know charisma. shit are saying he already one of the best ever. Yeah, that's Patrick Mahomes of of MMA. I can see that. I can see that. That makes sense. That Just makes sense. Just Way better yeah. voice. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. All the other things check out. So what I do is I have two more fights in middleweight against really good guys. Don't get me wrong, but they got to be able to speak fucking English and they got to have some swag and attitude about it. Because yeah. I need you to sell this fight with me. I'm not selling this fight by myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want every fight to be a spectacle. They're talking shit. I want country versus country. Yeah. Remember boxing matches. Mexico versus Philippines, yeah. and they're both talking shit like we don't know if there's a different, <laughs> like, you're the same to everybody, yeah. right? It's just like, but whatever, they're going at it. I go two more at middleweight. I let John Jones get a little older. John Jones already passed his prime. Yeah, yeah. He's a little bit older now. And he's hittable. He was always hittable. John Jones, thing is, John Jones is going to get hit. I was like, he's going to get hit. The only thing, and DC said this on the, uh, yes, shout out ESPN Plus on the, on the, oh, we going to talk about uh, ESPN that, Plus on that channel. But, but let me say this. He's real basically quick. saying, like, the reason why John Jones is so hard is that he's so big and he drags you so like he's such a good wrestler yeah yeah it feels like he's somebody's dragging you down yeah and eventually it wears you out and then he hits you and then it's done and dc said that and dc is a a olympic wrestler wrestler <laughs> so like if Best dc said it, he admits it yeah, right yeah, it, yeah. it's the real deal so so what happens is i go i let john jones age up a little bit i let him get a little and then what i do is i have izzy fight him after two more fights mm. in middleweight where you're already the biggest in the fucking sport you take john jones out Mm. of the sport you retire john jones yeah. essentially because mm. you retired silva now you retire the next mm-hmm. <laughs> great yeah. of mma right after yeah. silva which was john jones mm-hmm. you solidify yourself as the third one of them the next one exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. after that fight i put you up against canelo alvarez in a box i was thinking <laughs> what boxer i was trying to figure out what boxer but you gotta build to it gotta you, gotta build right? to you have to Molly, be Molly ubiquitous concern. with fight sports right you have to be so fucking big that we're willing now here's the we're willing to watch it now here's the difference between conor mcgregor fighting floyd and uh izzy fighting uh canelo mm. izzy's got nine pro boxing matches under his belt oh, izzy can fight better at I Izzy's think. a better boxer he, and more boxing. experienced. Yes, and he did regular boxing. Oh, he's nine I, fights. I, I, okay, I think I he was nine and one, or maybe eight and one, or something like that. Yeah. So he's 
fought real boxers already. Also, He's Canelo, got, not as good as Floyd. There we go. That's true. So now you have them go at it. Hopefully, Canelo speaks more English by then, and it's possible where he can get it going. Mm-hmm. And you have this fucking amazing, Put on the zone. Son, put that <laughs> put shit right on the zone. Put that shit on ESPN+. Plus. Who yeah. gives a fuck? Let them partner up on it. They yeah. found a way to do it with Conor yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and Floyd. That is the next big fuck you money fight. Mm-hmm. We're talking hundreds of millions. Oh yeah, if things that's, that's go, your, that's your Conor Floyd. Plan. My only concern is, and, and, that, and you may know more quick, than sorry, I. Sorry, to that point, if I'm Izzy, I just win or lose. I do one more of those mega fights. Hopefully, it's a good fight, and then I might be out. Why? Yeah. Why? Why fight more? I made yeah. hundred million dollars plus. I'm good. Izzy a smart guy. Go make some liquor, sell it like hey, Connor. I think you talked about protecting his brain. Like make that's a important. Joloff, bro. You got to have your signature <laughs> Joloff and get the fuck out of here. Now, here's my only concern with the with, with your scenario, right? I agree. One Izzy, more back in MMA. Go out on a high note. You could sell out the biggest stadium in Auckland ever. Yeah. Or whatever. You, I, I imagine by then they've already done the UFC Africa. Yep. Right? You do the yeah, biggest. They're going to do Nigeria. They got to. Of course. They, and, and if put both Usman, of them. Put, put fucking Sadiq on there. Put uh, Izzy on so there. So here's the thing. The, uh, Usman and and uh, what's it called and Izzy mm-hmm. should be able to carry their own card. Oh, for sure. But there is a world where they go. Do you guys just want to co-headline this and just fucking and just murder shit? Like, yeah, let's do a. Fu- you transcend the sport at that point. If it's these two, the two biggest fighters in Nigeria, that are also the two best fighters in the world, and they're like, fuck it. Fuck being the headliner. We're just going to do this big fucking event for our country. Mm-hmm. You transcend the UFC Who now. colonized Nigeria? And, fuck, you asked me history questions. I don't know that Britain? shit. Britain? <laughs> How the fuck you don't know who <laughs> colonized you, You got to know well, your enemy, Brit- yo. Well, the Jesus. British? The British? Why the British? I'm asking you. All no, I'm saying, no, put no, them no. against British fighters. Make it some real, you know what I mean? Like, yo. let's go type Bro, shit. I told, you, I told you I'm half asleep. Like I'm not, I'm not all the way woke, yeah. but um, nah. Yeah, my only concern, to, 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 <laughs> my only concern with the with the with the Izzy fight uh, for the Izzy scenario, and you might have more knowledge on this than I do, Go. is like fight mileage, right? Like Izzy isn't that much younger than John Jones. He is, but only by like a year or two or something like that. Yep. But John Jones has more UFC fights, right? But Izzy has had boxing matches, kickboxing matches, UFC equal fight experience, equal okay. All right. Maybe more fight experience for Izzy. Total fight experience. I mean, Izzy's had like 80 kickboxing fights. Damn. Keep in mind, though, these fights are three rounds, mm-hmm. right? Boxing yeah. matches are 12. Kickboxing yeah. stuff is usually like three, maybe five. I'm not sure if it's a championship, yeah. but like they're they're less. Okay. You know, so it's like, and also Izzy's knocking people out. Yeah. So, so he's fresh. Exactly. But when he you're looking at the fight, fight the, mileage- yeah. It's, you should actually look at round mileage. Got it. Mm. Got right? It. If yeah. you out, remember when Tyson was knocking everyone out in the first round? Yeah. He's like, I'll fight again in three months, four months. That's Why what not? Said, Izzy said I have to fight. He's like, oh, I'm fresh right now. Like, I could I could do another fight in a while, but I'm going to chill. I'm going to do this, this, that, and third. But, like, yeah, he's, he's, you're right. Round mileage instead of fight mileage. Paulo Costa, in my per, in personal opinion, needs to earn his fight against Izzy. Mm. And you earn it not by wearing flashy shirts, <laughs> you earn it by talking some shit mm. and getting people hyped. I have a fight in your hometown where you just knock someone out. Yeah. Like, just do something to make me interested. Get me interested in the fight, man. Like, he's already... Izzy did the best thing he could do is, at his biggest moment, calling you out. Now, you got to let people know who you are because everybody knows who he is now. Mm-hmm. So now, next time I see you fight, I'm like, all right, is this guy worth the shit? And if he, if he fucking floors somebody, I'm like, all right, I want to watch him too fight. Paulo Costa against another guy who mm. speaks English, not uh, UL Romero. You need mm. He needs to fight against a guy who speaks English. They have, I think he should do one more fight against them. Let's say do it in a month and a half, two months. Mm-hmm. Throw him on a card. He doesn't have to headline a card. Just put him on the card. He has to finish that guy in spectacular fashion. And th- it doesn't matter if it's a bum. If we just see him knock someone out, yeah. we're going to go... You know, people have that recency bias. They're like, yeah. oh, shit, maybe he's good. Maybe he can beat Izzy. <laughs> da, da, da. Then you build the Izzy fight. Yeah. But right now, in my opinion, he hasn't earned it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen him fight? You're the casual. I'm the complete casual, and I didn't know who he was. I Until you said the name, I saw him flick somebody off, and I was like, I don't know. And exactly. then he said the name, and I remembered him talking about it a year and a half ago. Right. What he got to start doing, Izzy, as someone who we all love this guy, put your business hat on now. Now you a star. Yeah. Your your boxing gloves got you there. Your kickball, whatever that is. Your skill got you there. Now let's start thinking money, oh, real yeah. money. As guys who want to see him flourish, go on. I want to see him fight five more times, make a hundred million dollars, be the fuck out. Be Get out, these Canelo yeah. fights and then be out. Fifth fight should be a hundred million. Mm-hmm. Fifth then, fight you should make the hundred million and then be out. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's like it's <laughs> it is crazy how fight sports work. Is that your last fight, you'll probably make more money than all of your other fights. Combined. Tenfold. <laughs> Combined times ten. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Oh, like, McGregor ain't making 50 million. How many fights Bro, did he after, many the, fights? after the Mayweather fight, he was taking pay cuts. Son. To go fight after pay that cut. shit. He's like, never doing that shit again. You, you got to thank yeah, Mayweather break for that. Off the UFC piece you. Of that you got to thank Mayweather for that. Yeah. Mayweather yeah. really set that. Facts. He's like, every, every single fight, he's like, nah, it's going to be more. More, yeah. more, 100%. and he had to break off Dana White for, for just to, just to be in that did. fight. Yeah, Connor Connor had to give Dana half. Yeah, which is that's like, why Mayweather's like, yo, you don't even own your business. Like, mm-hmm. don't even talk to me. Like Mayweather laughed when Connor was yeah. talking shit. It's it's Jay Z like, shit. It's you like, got bro, a daddy, bro. I don't. I know who I paid, yeah. dog. Yeah. Searchlight Publishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, like you made it a hotline and made it a hot song. Like you don't even own your shit. So. I can anyway, see why he doesn't. Talk I think anymore. it's it's a really cool thing to see. So busy fights Canelo. He gonna have to give Dana half. It depends. I, I mean, I this is where you get interesting. This is where, if I'm Izzy, you will have a contract upgrade coming, mm-hmm. right? There'll be a contract renegotiation or something like that. And that's where you get your lawyer to carve out anything outside of MMA. Mm. Now, the UFC has been very lenient with what these guys can do outside of MMA, right? They're doing jujitsu tournaments, they're doing grappling, wrestling tournaments. Like, they basically said, okay. We're not going to strangle you. You can go make your money at these little local shows. That's yeah. fine. We just want your MMA money. Yes. Yeah. So you basically go, well, make sure it's just MMA. Carve out that little fight shit. And then Dana don't got to get nothing. Mm. Now, Dana's not stupid. Dana's going to go, fine, you can do whatever. I just want 10% of the purse. 10% is better than 50. Yeah. No. Yes. And and right now, it's you probably in com- his- Sorry. You having these conversations with him? Uh, I think- Are you at liberty to say if you are? No, no, I think, uh, I mean, we, we, we could talk about stuff, but I, I think it's one of those things where it's like, I want him to win first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Let me tell you something. I watched, you I watched the replay. You already put the camera on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to win, dog. Yo, Let me not keep. Not going to hold you. That dancing in the beginning, I was shook. I was like, God. He's got to win now. <laughs> you can't do all that dancing and shit. So I got such paranoid thinking that like, oh my when he did that handstand with one hand, I'm like, please don't just take it. Yo, bro, I was like, come on, son. <laughs> like, like, calm down, I saw the bro, replay, man. and I was like, bro, calm the fuck down, yeah. yo. I already know he won. I was like, what you doing? 